I remember how uncomfortable it was to stand in a room full of people that I didn't know that I had to make now. And now, I'm chilling in a room like this. This is how I got over my imposter syndrome. At VidCon. Good morning, everybody. It is day zero of VidCon. I speak tomorrow and we're gonna get ready for the day, pack and get on over to Anaheim, California where VidCon is taking place. But first, let's make a drink. Now, normally I drink a matcha. You guys see me in my vlogs always make a matcha. But today, I'm feeling a coffee, okay? Sue me. I luckily got gifted this espresso machine like a year ago and it's like the best thing that's happened in my life. So I'm gonna show you how I make one. So I have grinded espresso beans and I'm gonna put it in my little pot. So this is my third VidCon speaking, which is crazy to say because I've been going to VidCon since 2017 as a fan. It's kind of crazy that I've been going to VidCon more as a speaker than as a fan. Cause I love VidCon and I love YouTubers. And like, I remember my first time speaking at VidCon in 2021, I felt such like an imposter because I was like, I'm still a fan. Like I'm literally meeting like the Merrill twins and like fucking Joey Graceffa. And I'm just like, I love you. Why am I speaking on the same stage as you? You know what I mean? <laughs> and like another huge thing is like, I don't have that many subscribers and like I love, Every single one of you guys, I read every single comment that you guys comment. So thank you, Darma Nation. Comment Darma Nation if you're part of it. But like still, like I get insecure, right? That's super normal to like compare yourself to other people's accomplishments. So it took me a long time to feel comfortable to go to these events and not feel like I'm out of place. Got all the espresso beans. You just press it in to kind of like pack it in and we're gonna take it to the machine. I think part of the reason why I felt so much imposter syndrome, not just at VidCon, was because I felt like I had to prove myself at a very young age. I dropped out of high school as at 16. You guys, I feel like you think I'm a broken record because I always tell this story, but it's part of who I am, okay? I had a thousand subscribers when I dropped out. I had like five dollars in my bank account, you know? So like, I was not doing so hot and I know like a lot of people were like rooting on my downfall, low key. So I just felt like I had to prove myself and even though like six years later i dropped out and like i've made it like i make my money i think i mean like i i do <laughs> i see your comments people really believe that i'm a nepo baby and i'm like have you seen my big account when i was younger <laughs> but um like yeah so i feel like even though i have a lot more things i can be proud of now i feel like i'm still like that 16 year old trying to prove herself to the world you know so we're gonna kind of go over my tips for overcoming imposter syndrome if you're in a similar boat or in general just how to get yourself out of your comfort zone and just like live life for you mm. cheers things took a turn um we are going to a vip salt and straw tasting and if you guys don't know what salt and straw is it's this really popular place that sells ice cream they have locations in california but they started in Portland, Oregon. And if, you, and if you guys know me, I'm from there. So, well, I lived there for like 10 years. So we are gonna kind of go through a full circle moment and go to Salt and Straw for a VIP tasting and meet the founders there. And by the way, I have to be at VidCon in like two, three hours. And like, what am I doing right now? Going to a VIP tasting. Is this the smartest thing to do? Probably not, but I could not miss. Oh my God, wait, yo, that's my friend. <laughs> okay. Um, it's probably not the smartest idea, but we're just gonna do this anyway. Uh, you're gonna be out and about though. Mm, this is up my alley. This is up my alley. Yeah, yeah that, that one's good. Red pudding. Guys, we made it. We are at VidCon. We're in the hotel. I'm staying with my bestie, Karu. Bestie! <coughs> Say hi! Uh, oh, hi. Okay, so last time you saw me, I was at this other influencer event now we're at the influencer event i feel like such a content creator god i am actually just about to get ready for our first event it's this rooftop party with carrot and fourth wall and i want to give you guys just my first tip when it comes to getting over your imposter syndrome and for me it's genuinely realizing that everyone that is 
like put together most likely has something you don't know okay we all put our best foot forward on social media and i've just met a lot of people who are rich on paper or are successful and still go through insecurities and go through a lot of problems so i think like for me it's like really easy just to look at someone and look at their highlights but everyone also has failures and that's kind of like how i approach networking events like i just see people all as one like nothing puts you higher or puts you on a pedestal and it's a hard thing to really set in stone but once you meet more and more people you realize we're all the same we're, we're all a little bit feral and fucked up I'm with my girls. <laughs> Wait, why is that so awkward? Why was that so awkward? You're supposed to say hi. I thought you were saying Cosette from girl, Leah. No, I didn't forget. I was waiting for your cameo, bitch. You guys think I'm just forgetting what's this? Give us our cameo. Okay. I'm here with Cosette, Cosette and Leah. <laughs> this whole thing and I'm gonna wear this little this little brown Chanel moment with my brown slam sandals and some sunnies we are here at VidCon 2023 this is my fourth VidCon ever you guys it's so packed Give us such a big room, like, I know this is embarrassing. Like, can you just like put us in a very small like, room? Like, put us in the closet and we'll right. fill it up. We'll fill up the closet 100%. Like, I can fill up the closet. <laughs> no, car, look, more people are coming. Who did you pay? <laughs> really relate to this because I did try to chase views and I got like hundreds of millions of views a month before, like, like, like four years ago. But I also am now like at a point where like I don't get that much views. And like in the beginning, that transition hurt me. For my ego, you know, like it was like, oh my gosh, who am I as a creator? I think for me, my answer to like, how do you make content for you and not care about you is it honestly comes unfortunately down to money. Are you financially stable enough where you can take that risk? And if you're not, it's okay. Like, I think it's fine to like chase the algorithm, chase the views, as long as you understand it's a short term byproduct of what you want in the long term. So, for example, I knew that in the long term I wanted to run my own company, I, I didn't want to rely on views. So, I think. It comes down to diversify your income. You can use platforms like, you know, for you, are you like relying on like AdSense or like creator fund stuff like that? Uh, right, because we've got 80% of my deals. Okay. So maybe you might want to launch a product. You can use platforms like Fourth Wall or like. Okay, so I just finished my panel. It was really unhinged, basically. One of the guests couldn't come. So it was just me, Karu, and the moderator. And we were just like going off like just feeling so unhinged just like talking our asses off we rose up the audience we got the audience to come up on stage but yeah this was probably the most like funny po like panels i've been on but also like the most destructive but i'm sure someone liked it or someone laughed at least because it was it was quite uh, interesting i'm going to now my next event which is an interview with sean canal i don't know why <laughs> i'm getting interviewed because i feel like sean makes like really dope content about like creators and like I'm just like I don't know I feel like I don't get that many views so I'm like why do you want me on your channel? Are you coming to do a video? Yeah, a video. Oh sorry, recording. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's actually getting let go today. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm here with Sean. What's up, Jade? It's hi. Um, <laughs> tell me about what you thought about the podcast. Like, tell me about how I did. <laughs> just compliment me. No, it was it was good. It was it was fun. It was actually legit unhinged. Really? It was it, was, it had a Gen Z flair to it. Did you know that walking in that without? I had no idea. Like no, I, I'm I'm typically very structured, and we were a little bit more. It was it was more like just enjoying the journey. Yeah. It was go with the flow. I think it's like when you go to like any overseas flight, there's a lot of turbulence, but low key fun because it's like a free roller coaster. Yeah, I feel that. And so, anyways, but no, you're super cool. I love what you're doing. I respect you know the different stuff you're doing, and it's I think it's inspiring to a lot of people. Check out Think Media, link below. Thank you, Kyle. And thank you, Kyle, for filming. He still has a job. You can watch me do a speed run of putting my boots on. Ooh. 
Guys, my boyfriend has these insane boots. They're called the Big Red Boots from Mischief. You've probably seen it if you're on social, but let's just say they are fucking big. And red. <laughs> Dude, come on easy though, look at that. Look. <laughs> Babe, off. Nice. this literally gets so many compliments and attention. Like it's insane. Like people take photos of him like everywhere. But honestly, I-, mean, I It's because it's Vicon too. Okay, know? so what was so funny guys, at our fucking finesse panel, a bunch of people came up on stage to ask us questions and we're like, oh my God, great. Like we get questions. They're like, no, we're just up here to ask a question so I can say I finesse my way to speaking on a VidCon stage. I think our, me and Karu's podcast and like our finesse whole message is coming off really strong because apparently like five or six people finesse their way onto a stage because of us, which is awesome. Like I've, I'm living for it. I just think that's so funny. So yeah, fake it till you make it guys. If everything's a finesse, imposter syndrome seriously can be overcome by just finessing it <sighs> all right guys i'm gonna be completely honest with y'all i just got back from a ton of events i went to the youtube lounge the instagram lounge the tiktok lounge i went to a spotify after party and now i am back here i met with a bunch of different people super fun super busy and i'm just really tired i just feel like going home honestly like i it's weird for me to say this because like i remember when i was first on youtube i thought like being a VidCon speaker, you would never have any problems, right? Like if you're a popular creator, if you've made, like, if you've made it, you're perfect and you're happy. But the truth is, I'm really grateful for obviously everything that I've had in my life, but there are different things that come up. You're gonna be more exhausted, stressed, there can be anxiety, and like I'm feeling all of that right now. So I think this just goes to show you that if you're dealing with imposter syndrome, just know that the people that you might idolize or look up to or put on a pedestal, at the end of the day have like, fucking bullshit you know to go through too and like it's just important to know that no one's no, no one is perfect i know that sounds so cringy but like literally the lives we see on the screen are not the true life itself okay i feel really weird for wanting to go home right now because it's like i i love vidcon and i love meeting creators i'm just tired and that's okay right guys I just woke up from the best slumber ever. I think I was cranky at VidCon because I didn't sleep at all. And let me explain why. If you guys don't know, I have a podcast with my friend Karu, a little photo of him. Uh, we have a podcast together called Finesse. You can check it out here. But uh, I'm not gonna talk about promoting our podcast today. I'm gonna talk about the fact that me and Karu shared a hotel room together. Karu snores really loud, so I couldn't sleep. And also in general, I just am very like, like if I don't have like a good night routine and morning routine i like don't sleep very well because i have anxiety i feel so much better i'm actually right now in mammoth <laughs> snowboarding for a little summer ski trip but um this just kind of leads me to my last point which is in terms of getting over your posture syndrome it really helps when you have very full compassion for yourself because if you don't love yourself okay this is kind of cheesy but if you don't love yourself it's hard to believe in yourself and put yourself in those uncomfortable situations where you might need to believe you're greater than you actually are so in a way leaving vidcon leaving early for my sleeping schedule probably was the best thing i could do because i didn't want to put my body through not sleep like i'm not joking guys when i don't say i don't sleep like i literally will be in bed like two, like two hours at a time just like staring at a wall and like I'll, I'll like close my eyes for a little bit and then wake up anyways thank you for watching my vidcon vlog i hopefully don't sound too pretentious and high maintenance but the truth is i am i'm very high maintenance i have a lot of health problems and i'm very picky so thank you also shout out to the comment winner shout out to the comment winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode i love you guys bye see you in my next vlog